Could this $30 product right here save you hundreds of dollars down the road? Let's talk about that now. Guys, how you doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Problem of the day. What do you do when you have a cylinder exposed like this for a long period of time? Could be on a backhoe, you got the grapple here. Could be your bucket, could be an extra attachment that has a hydraulic cylinder on it. A lot of comments and videos talk about retract those cylinders. Don't let these rods be exposed for long periods of time or you're gonna have pitting, corrosion, problems down the road, expensive repairs. This channel is all about learning, all about education, all about having fun. If you like what you see here, consider giving me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video to see more helpful content like this. And all this equipment you see here behind me, it is for sale. Head on over to goodworkstractors.com or check out that description below. There'll be a lot of helpful links down there where you can get products found in this video, other cool tractor products, and even places you can get 5% off with code GWT. One of the great things about this channel is you get all sorts of comments down below in these videos. And this is one that's been appearing over the course of time it happened again i don't know in the last video or a couple videos ago and it's something i chose to take a little bit deeper dive into because i wanted to actually sink in this time and and not go in one ear and out the other i don't really know if i have a good solution for it because it seems like if you do one thing there's a consequence or a trade-off right for the other thing and to be honest how do you define long what is long term is it six months two months five years ten years i mean sometimes you see this equipment on the restoration channels where they're finding something parked in a field for 15, 20, 30 years. They power it up. It fires right up. All the hydraulics and everything work without a whole lot of monkeying around. Other times the stuff's pitted, corroded, and a complete rebuild. So maybe a little bit of it is just luck of the draw or how it was treated or how it was manufactured to begin with. There's probably a lot of factors that go into it, but this is a solution that could work for you. So you take a look at a grapple. It's in the closed position. You would think you kind of want it in this position for storage. However, doing so exposes the rod. Take a look at the backhoe here off my 1025. This is in the stored position. You have exposed cylinder rod here. You got another exposed cylinder rod down this way. On top of that, you got the bucket curled down there and collecting water and ice all winter long. Even brand new attachments, they come in just like this. I suppose you could orient it, rotate it so that uh, the cylinders were retracted in some manner, but you're gonna have a really awkward position for an attachment like this flail mower. Otherwise, you're gonna have exposed rods here and here. Another attachment here, four in one bucket. You can see the exposed rods in the, um, you would think, stored position. I guess you'd have to open the bucket all the way up and store it in that position to have these retracted. Not really sure that's practical. Okay, so this is, I guess, the fully retracted position as far as the cylinders go. So what you can see is not a whole lot of exposed rod. I've, I've basically got this in the, uh, the max position here, essentially all the way retracted on the tilt cylinder as well. And the trade-off, if you're gonna be storing it outdoors, which a lot of folks are, is your bucket's gonna be trapping water and ice and whatever else feels like falling in there. Now I get it, in my opinion, a bucket is a lot more durable than potentially your cylinders here. It's made to take abuse. It's made to be covered in dirt and grime, get some rain on it, but it is going to cause some corrosion over time. I think though it's going to happen slow enough where you can maintain it. Whereas if you have issues on your hydraulic cylinders, that could be a much more costly or at least a lot bigger headache to have to deal with. Now, interestingly enough, I found a survey when trying to do a little research on this topic so I could sound a little bit more intelligent. Tractorforum.com, I'll post a link before. I think you should check it out. There's five pages of comments that were um, on this thread along with the survey. So the question was asked, how do you position your loader when not in use? The survey had eight options to choose from, eight answers you could select from, and over 30%, nearly a third of the respondents said, I store my loader outside with the boom down, okay, and the bucket in the dump position like what you see right here. So in my mind, what that tells me right off the bat is that folks are a lot more concerned about stuff being collected in their bucket than they are about these cylinders right here. And it's funny, you'll see comments down below in that thread about if you have high quality chroming done on here, then you're not gonna have to worry about anything. And only if it's inferior or junky chroming or if you have a nick in it where you're gonna start to see issues. To be honest, I don't really know a whole lot about that. I'm not a complete hydraulics expert, but it's an interesting topic nonetheless, and I'm not sure there's a perfect solution. 
So in the course of research, there were a couple products out there that were designed to protect cylinders like this or other even exposed fittings. So if you have exposed fittings on your track and you're going to be in a harsh environment, uh, this could be a good solution for you to protect those and keep them from corroding over time. Okay, so these are the couple products right here that seem to be pretty highly recommended by a lot of different uh, um, websites, hydraulic websites. So one is, of course, a spray formula here. This one right here, as you can see, is tape. Denso tape, I guess, is kind of what it goes by. You can also buy a grease uh, or a waxy grease to put underneath this and then apply the tape over top of it. But you kind of wrap a cylinder where this, you just kind of spray it on. So these look like kind of nasty products that I don't really want to get dirty with. So we got uh, the cameraman here, my, uh, my overpaid brother. We're gonna make him do the dirty work. I'm gonna get behind the camera. So we've got my backhoe here. This is where it's been sitting for the last month or two. And uh, this is where it's probably gonna sit all winter long unless I somehow come up with some other plans. But we have these cylinders that are, or the rods I should say, that are exposed there and there. We're gonna try this stuff out. Let me see that. This looks it, disgusting. Yeah, it's nasty stuff. That's why I'm having, having you do it. I don't know want gloves or not. Yeah, it's gonna gum them up. And now I think it said, if I remember online, to use mineral spirits uh, once you end up taking this off. You definitely want to try to, of course, remove the tape and then uh, get all the residue off of there before you retract those cylinders. Boy, I didn't see a start point here. I just had to make one. The smell? Just barely. Can't think of what that smells like. Well, it's kind of a waxy, heavy, greasy type of stuff. Well, I better back up here. <laughs> getting, getting dangerous. Look at that. It's oh, yeah. Like, like a belt material. Man, it's really thick it's stuff. Like webbing. Huh. Or beef jerky. Mm, go ahead and give it a nibble. That's actually, it's not, I don't think it leaves too much residue. No? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it on my fingers, ideally, but I probably should have grabbed more disposable gloves, but yeah, it's got good, good, good yeah, look at that. It just sticks right It kind of just stays in place? Cold weather, it's got good adhesion. It's got flex. Huh. It sticks to itself real easy, but yeah, you're going to have to, I can't wrap this underneath there. I'm going to cut up another line. Yeah, maybe just cut off sections, workable sections. Yeah. I saw a video a guy made uh, where he saw this product used on a ship. Um, maybe it was a fishing vessel somewhere, you know, in the Atlantic or the Pacific, in a saltwater application where they used it to protect a lot of uh, fittings on there from corrosion. I uh, could ask my friend Dave, who's actually probably watching. What's up, Dave? Uh, he worked in that arena. He might know. It's, it's, it just actually kinda, feels like, like a, it's a good product. It sticks to itself well. Yeah. You can tell. I actually didn't do this intentionally, but since this is angled up, oh, yeah. it makes sense to lap it the way I did. Yeah. But that I don't like. This is that precious, but if we're gonna cover it, let's cover it in a way that makes sense. But, uh, so it's not too messy then. Well, I mean, look at. I'll show you my gloves here in a second, and I'll feel them. See when I'm done with it. It is interesting. I think it wants to stick to itself more than my my gloves, and it sticks to this st steel actually really well. You don't think the cold applying this in the cold like this has any? I thought any? it was going to be a huge problem, but look, it's just like it's just like rubber, it's gummed up. Oh, you can. Yeah. Oh wow! So, so you it, can almost make those seams disappear by melding it into itself. It's got so much give. I think it. I mean, I would say you should probably run this up there again for the same idea of water not getting in. But, well, I was going to say, you might be able to press it and create a seal, but I don't know how this does over time. Right. So I'm just going to put it up there as high as I can. That's a bit here. Stuff I'm guessing is not cheap for tape, but cheap for a so, uh, storage solution, for sure. Yeah, it wasn't... You know, it wasn't overly expensive, but again, there was different size rolls you could buy. And so it kind of just depends on the roll size. I mean, and this is a long-term solution, right? So maybe once, twice a year that you would use this. And it's only taking a couple of minutes to install this, really, it's, right? It's incredibly easy to install. I thought it was going to be finicky or just disgusting, but no, it's pretty nice. Now, my gloves, they're going to need, this, this res residue is going to need to 
work its way off on the stuff that I, I don't mean, want like to touch. I mean, like a waxy, greasy, like oily it's, type it's, of thing? Or? A, a fingerprint there. But yeah, it's just, it's like, it's like, just a light grease. Hmm. I mean, look at my knife though, right? I gotta clean my knife off. Looks like it's been going somewhere the sun don't shine. Alright, but the other one's gonna be for sure easier. <laughs> yeah, but it seems like it could be messier actually. Right? Let's see, I've got, I've got a ball in there to shake it around. Now this, it's a corrosion inhibitor for all metals during shipment or extended storage. Do not apply while equipment is energized. Before using on power equipment, shut off power supply. Allow hot surfaces to cool. Best results are obtained when used above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. It is not 60 degrees Fahrenheit here, in case you couldn't <laughs> tell. Shake well, mask area is not to be treated. Wow. I'll shoot, I'll shoot it out towards the concrete. Allow each coat to dry to a tacky film before applying next coat. This is what we'll do. I'll grab a piece of cardboard, put it right behind it. I'm sure we got something. It's just gonna be right behind here, right? Yeah. And I'll just spray it towards it. Yeah, but it's not 60 degrees it's or above. It's not 60 degrees, but it's not gonna harm it, right? It just I might. just don't know if it'll spray we'll, or, we'll it, or, it. or adhere correctly. We'll uh, got my mask. You're not gonna get the, the back hole all greasy, are you? No, of course not. All right. I'm just trying to hit it right on this exposed part, obviously. But I guess technically you should mask that off. I should probably get something else. Yeah. Again, I'm just gonna aim low first. I'm gonna aim in the middle first. Okay, so what's one problem that I can see right off the bat? How do you get this on the back side? Yeah, you just gotta spray it really spray it side, but. really heavily. Oh, it stinks too, unlike the other stuff. I can smell it from here. Hey, wash the boots. <laughs> because it's brown, you can kind of see where you've applied it and haven't applied it evenly. No, it does say to spray a little bit further back than what I'm doing, but obviously I'm trying not to hit the other parts of the tractor. So, I don't think it's bad for them to be rust inhibited. Yeah, I guess not, but I, I'll say that seems like a lot bigger pain in the butt than using that tape. And I It'll think. Go a lot further, I would say, though. Yeah. Uh, than that tape will. But how many exposed cylinders do you have on your lot, in your barn, in your shed? Right. We happen to have, you know, dozens. Yeah. But you have maybe four or five. That roll is going to last way more than. Or cover way more than all of those cylinders, I'm guessing. Well, I guess, you know, that wasn't too bad. And in reality, I thought that the spray was going to be an easier solution. But kind of seeing it done, not doing it firsthand, but just watching somebody else do it, you know, it really seems like that tape might be the better way to go, especially considering the fact that you don't have to do it very often. So really, ideally, and I've said this before, if you can, store your equipment indoors. But we all aren't able to do that. I'm not able to do that out here at the lot either. But a lot of my equipment turns over quickly, so I don't have to worry about it. But certain things like this backhoe or the grapple on the 5115M, they're just going to be sitting out here and they are going to be exposed. I've never really given it a whole lot of thought. I don't really know how quickly damage would occur or not. But it's something to be aware of, to keep in mind. And if you're looking for long-term solutions to protect your equipment, this could be something you want to look into. So if you found this video helpful, consider giving me a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button right down below if you want to see more content like this. If you're in the market for a tractor or an attachment, looking for some cool products or cool ideas, check out that description below as well. There's all sorts of helpful links down there, places you can get 5% off with code GWT, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. We'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Hey, Chris, would you uh, go pick up those products bring them inside, please? I don't want to get my hands dirty. Burr. It's chilly. I'm heading inside where it's warm. <laughs>